Good morning. Welcome to Fort Laramie Country Church. We're glad you're with us this morning. This is a little different. You're actually hearing a full message uh, where the church service itself today or Sunday is a music a service. We're going to be singing Christmas songs through the whole service and praising God that way. Short devotional. So we're going to be looking at probably one of the most encouraging parts of the Christmas story for average people, I guess, if you put it that way. Um, I actually touched on this a little bit earlier on our Facebook page uh, when I talked about how God uses ordinary people. I got thinking about it. That's a message that should be preached today. So as we get into this, let's have a word of prayer. Father, I'm going to ask you to open our hearts today and may we not miss what you're trying to show us and help us grasp the kind of people you use and how you use them and when you use them and how that applies to us. Help us grasp what you're trying to teach us here with the people you used in the Christmas story. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll be in Luke 2, 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth, laying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Then the angel had, when the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was laying in the manger. And when they seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen were just as they had been told. You know, it says in verse 8, And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. You know why shepherds? That's what we're going to talk about. Why shepherds, you know? A shepherd is one who really took care of the flocks and the sheep and the goats. And since this was virtually one of the most important domestic animals of time, there were many shepherds. Uh, in fact, the Bible uses the word shepherd over 500 times. Uh, shepherds were as common as cell phones in Walmart. And uh, if you live in Wyoming like we do, their ranchers are common. They were as common as ranchers. You know, in fact, I think about that a lot of times. Uh, if Jesus would have been born in Wyoming, he'd have used ranchers. In fact, verse 8 would have said, And there were ranchers out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their herd at night. They'd have been night calvers, you know. It, I, I, I like it that God used shepherds. I do. We can relate with the shepherd. Uh, the Lord is using someone who we're able to connect with here. Someone who has who's someone who's calm and an average, someone who's not perfect, someone who doesn't have all the answers, someone who puts his pants on one leg at a time, someone who sleeps in a wall tent and shoots coyotes. Man, I can relate with that, and I'm sure you can too. You know, when, uh, when we look at Jesus' ministry and how he used common people all the way through his ministry, and, and even the idea that Jesus pastored a megachurch of 12, and, and, and none of the 12 disciples had any credentials for their roles. Most of them came from modest backgrounds uh, with little distinction. Uh, none of them had a theology degree. Um, the disciples were uneducated fishermen and tax collectors. Yet they became the chosen vehicles God used to carry the message of Jesus. Just like, just like the shepherds. 
All through the all through the scripture, God used ordinary people. How exciting is that? God used Moses, who was shy and fearful and afraid to speak. He qualified him to lead millions from slavery. God used David, a young shepherd boy, to kill a giant and be one of the greatest kings of Israel. God chose a tiny, insignificant nature, nation called Israel to bring out the Messiah. They were all ordinary people. You know, I joke about this, and a lot of times we think, my gift is ordinary. I don't bring anything to the table. But we don't need to be superheroes for God to use us. We don't need to have all the answers. Now, society teaches us with bigger, better, faster, stronger is what we need to be successful. And we got to be careful that our churches don't get sucked into that. We look for the most qualified sometimes. And, and, and that's not necessarily who God wants to use. A number of years ago, we were, before I was in the ministry, we were, we were part of a very small church, actually. And they said, we need to get a pastor with a doctorate. And it kind of made me smile. Because really, God really uses ordinary people. God wants to use ordinary people. In fact, age has nothing to do with who God wants to use. Billy Graham wrote a book called Nearing Home, and he talks about how, how God used all the men and women later in life. Noah, Abraham, Moses, Joshua were in their 80s. You know, uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth, you know, older, old, past childbearing years. But um, I lied about that. And one of the great men in my life was Marion Ferguson. He was 71, and I was in my mid-20s when I met him. I was a new believer at the time, and I had the privilege of, of visiting with him one and two times a week. God used that man in a mighty way. He wasn't the greatest preacher I've ever heard. Uh, he wasn't a big man, kind of soft-spoken almost. But I'm going to tell you what, God moved in the church through his leadership, and, and we saw a revival. I've never seen since. He was a very average person. Verse 8, And there were shepherds out living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. Look at when God used them. They were out in the fields. God used them right where they were, right where they were living, keeping watch over their flock at night. God used them when they were at work. It's really easy to want to plan for God to use us. So we go on a mission trip. We go, nothing wrong with mission trips. Or we go visit someone on Saturday night and there's nothing wrong with visiting somebody. So we make big plans or big events at the church and there's nothing wrong with that. But God used them right where they, right where they were as they were living out life, everyday life. The shepherds didn't plan any of this. They were just doing life. God says, I want to use you. Verse 16, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was laying in the manger. They responded to the invitation to get involved. We must be willing, if God's going to use us, no matter how average we are, we must be willing to respond when God speaks to us, when God deals with us, when God leads us. Our response is critical to being used by God. They hurried off. They responded instantly. Verse 17, and when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. They were sharing the message of Jesus. And the fun part of that is, you and I know shepherds, they can't keep a secret anyway. They shared everything they knew, everything they'd experienced. When we experience God in all his fullness, when we experience who Jesus is, we want to share it. It'd be a natural thing. They were just sharing what they'd experienced. How simple is that? How ordinary is that? They experienced what they'd experienced about Jesus. We complicate it sometimes. We want to make all the, all the uh, this is how you and that's how you do it kind of stuff, when really it's all about sharing Jesus in an ordinary way, in our ordinary lives. Every day. You know, if you're familiar with the Christmas special, the Charlie Brown Christmas, 
it, it's uh, if you think about it at the time uh, it's you know Snoopy's decorations on his doghouse and and Lucy's Christmas pageant and and Charlie Brown's pitiful little Christmas tree if you will and and uh, Linus appears on center stage and and actually right from Luke's account of Jesus' birth. Uh, that's how, because Char, Charlie Brown wanted to know what it was all about. And Linus steps up and, and right out of the, the book of Luke. And it was interesting, that almost did get, didn't get seen on TV because the network was afraid to use Jesus' name. Isn't that interesting? But Charles Schultz stepped up and this is what he said. He says, if we don't do it, who will? And we're going to do it. And you know what? The rest is history. And that should virtually be a wonderful example to us of how to proclaim Jesus Christ. Who's going to do it if we don't? Acts 4, 18 and 20. Listen to this. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourself whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. Verse 20. For we cannot help speak what we have seen and what we have heard. How simple is that? How ordinary is that? The message of Jesus was meant to be shared with the ordinary people in ordinary lives. Verse 20, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things that they had heard and seen, which are just as they had been told. See, when God uses ordinary people, He gets the glory. We get in trouble when we think we bring things to the table when we want to take credit for what happens. But when God uses ordinary people, nobody can explain that. That's how He gets the glory. See, if you feel ordinary or less than ordinary, you're exactly who God wants to use. But I feel there's another reason God used shepherds. And they talk a lot about shepherds. I don't think we totally understand shepherds. We don't have the sheep in our culture like they did. We do understand people that deal with livestock. We understand cowboys and cattlemen and because they, they take care of their livestock. We can kind of relate that way. But I believe he did it because Jesus wants to be our shepherd. John 10, 14, he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. If you give your life to Jesus Christ, or if you've ever asked Jesus Christ into your heart, you get to have Jesus as your shepherd. That's the gift that He wants to give you. Not only eternal life, but He wants to be your shepherd. Let me read you the 23rd Psalm. I memorized this in a different translation. So it's a little hard to read sometimes when you've memorized it in a verse, and you've probably done that and then try to read it in another one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. This is what he's offering you. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Who wouldn't want that? That's what Jesus is offering you, to be your shepherd. And when you get to, when you give your life to Christ, the 23rd Psalm is your gift. If you've never done that this Christmas, it's real easy to do. You can do it right where you are. 
You just have to acknowledge you're a sinner and need a Savior. That's why Jesus came. He didn't come for Christmas. He came for Easter. He came to die on the cross. He came to rise out of the grave. He came so we could have eternal life. And He paid the price. He took all those sins on Himself when He died on that cross. That's why you can ask Him to forgive every sin you've ever done. He took them. All you have to do is ask Him to forgive them and come into your heart. Make Him Lord. Make Him Shepherd. You can do that right now. And if you don't even understand it, would like to know more about it, after this video is played, you'll see our Facebook page and our web page. There's a, fame, there's a phone number there. Please call. Talk to us about it. I'd love to visit with more about it. Let's pray. Father, we thank You that You use people like us ordinary, average, that brings nothing to the table. But you're the one that makes the difference. Father, we're just going to ask you to use us to share the message of Jesus this year to a world who's crying out for him. In your name, amen.